get started. Okay, we want to welcome everybody to our February session. We deeply appreciate the time that you have chosen to spend with us and trust is something we say to do uh, to our visitors will have a positive impact upon your life uh, and that you will can, you know, discover what it is we do as a local development council. Uh, what we want to do is start out, we have a presentation tonight uh, from FAME, Ms. Tony Lewis, she's the CEO of uh, FAME, the Foundation for the Advancement of, of Music and Education Incorporated. We'll hear from her in a second, uh, but we want to just kind of get the normal business out of the way. And what we will do is uh, uh, move over to Ms. Lewis and give her the mic and, and start from there. And I understand that uh, Senator Patterson may not make it on and I talked to Delegate Turner this evening. Um, she called to ask for information to get on. I don't know whether uh, she's up in Annapolis, both of them are up in Annapolis. And so I don't know if either one of them will be on along with Delegate uh, Ballarama. But we'll go ahead and get started with just uh, an overview of, uh, and first I wanna I, again, thank all of you this, we celebrate one year for most of you, um, and in uh, uh, Ms. Walker, Rashida, uh, Ms. Mack, uh, Mr. Harris, and, and uh, of course, uh, Nicole, we uh, ran into a real rough situation last year. We lost five of our members, uh, all in key situation and positions. Their time expired uh, last year, and it threw us into a situation where uh, it created a lot of problems for us. Uh, then on top of that, we lost Shaka, uh, who was the coordinating things. And uh, Ryan was assigned to a different position, um, which kind of threw things into even a further turmoil. Uh, and then we, he had to split his time between us and other things that he was doing with COVID. We finally ended up with Ms. Brown and Ms. Carey. Um, and uh, a, a true shout out to Kimberly Hall, who kind of stabilize things with the selection committee. But I wanna thank all of you for spending the entire year with us. Uh, we've had a successful year, I think, based upon everything that we were faced with. We had a successful year. We were able to see the American Job Center open in Tangier. Uh, we did get the awards done. We developed the a, a, uh, audit and inspections uh, for an oversight committee uh, with audit and inspections. We've managed to look at several uh, different um, <clears throat> Uh, grantees, who we kind of felt that we needed to take a look at how they were using the money. So it's very, very important that we uh, we continue those things. But what I'd like to do is just a, a, a brief overview. Uh, Kimberly is not with us this, this evening. I don't see her yet. But the Oversight Committee, if you have any, anything that you would like to report, then uh, Kevin will hear from you and Rashida and Murray Navies uh, and Miss, Miss Mack on the public relations uh, side of things. And then, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, that was uh, Rashida uh, Murray Navis and, and, and Ms. Mack, and then Kevin on the Needs Assessment Committee, yourself, Ms. Uh, Prelo, and Senator Patterson. And of course, our legislative branch is not here. I don't see Mr. Lewis online either. So we'll get through those things and also talk about the standard operating procedure and where we are with that. And then we will turn it over to Ms. Lewis uh, so that we can. Uh, see what she's doing. Ms. Lewis uh, invited me to one of her sessions uh, that had to be canceled because of COVID. And uh, I thought uh, it would be good to hear from her and the, and the, the struggles that she was having with the, the program, particularly as it related to COVID. So she's gonna give us a presentation tonight along with herself and Ms. Uh, Valentine and uh, we'll move from there. But do we have any reports on the, well, Kimberly is not here. How about the Oversight Committee? Uh, Dr. Dr. Lattimore, yourself, and uh, Takesha Walker. Um, I don't have anything to report. Um, Takesha? Okay. Uh, how about, uh, 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 what is it, Public Relations, uh, Kevin? No, that's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Rashida, Ms. Navies, and Carrie Mack. Nothing report from our last meeting, last month's meeting. Okay, um, needs assessment, Kevin. If I might add, um, Pastor, um, yes, the, the press release went out. And so the public has been made aware of the grant and the process for the grant. And, and that's been posted on the social media, uh, not social, on my social media, and many social media sites. But in addition, it's on the LDC site. Yes, okay. Um, and all the grantees should be aware of that. Um, um, so I'm, I'm sure, and Ms. Brown, uh, you went on, but uh, we wanted to just kind of give you and Ms. Curry accolades on 
helping us to get through a trying time on last year. We deeply appreciate uh, the things that you did to help us to kind of stay afloat with losing five of our members all at the same time, um, along with yourself and, and Ms. Kerry. So we did mention that uh, at, and as we enter into our one year celebration of most of our membership. Um, so with that in mind, how about, uh, well, none of the delegates are here. Uh, how are we coming with the uh, standing operating procedure? Anybody um, for the report on that? So, uh, uh, Pastor, so just, just go back to the, the needs assessment committee. Yeah. Uh, so I want to give a report for the needs assessment. Okay. Why don't yeah. you go ahead and do that now, and we will get out of the way and let uh, um, Ms. Tony Lewis uh, and, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Valentine do uh, their thing. Got it. Appreciate it. So uh, I won't, I'll will i be quick. So uh, I wasn't able to provide an update last time, but this time, uh, so the committee is going to work to produce five survey questions in order to hear the needs um, of the community. That's one um, avenue that we're going to work, but we're also going to work with Ryan to have this survey to be sent out to the communities. Um, but we need to determine what that list will, will be uh, Will look like will it be all the prince george's county will it be a small sample of prince george's county will it be only the radius uh, within the mgm um, but we also will develop a timeline of when to have the survey questions ready uh, when to send out the survey uh, when to receive the survey responses uh, when to review the responses and then provide a survey feedback to the ldc um, obviously this won't take place for this um calendar year, but we'll look at doing it for the next fiscal year. So this will take place for the, uh, the next grant cycle of 2023. Um, so that's what we're going to look at. So we probably get this started later um, in this year, but we'll work um, to get these steps in place. And we have a good timeline um, breakout for the committee to take a look and review later on, probably after this particular grant cycle. Uh, so that's all I had to report for the needs assessment at this particular time. Okay, Ryan, I, uh, I just talked to Delegate Turner. She's still having problems getting on. I sent her a, um, a, um, a fresh copy, but you may need to send it to her again. Um, okay, do we have anybody else before we uh, turn it over to uh, Ms. Lewis? All right, Ms. Lewis, uh, Ms. Lewis um, I ran Ms. Lewis a couple of years ago. And uh, of course, this is her second attempt at uh, um, making a bid for funding. Um, and this round last year, she uh, made a bid, invited me, as I said, to a, a, a function of hers um, that uh, was canceled because of COVID. And, and I thought to, I, I just gave thought to what kind of difficulties she may be having, what kind of successes she may be having through the COVID uh, process and, and, and gave her a call and asked her if she would give us a presentation, um, talk about the, the restrictions that, that COVID has placed upon her and, and the successes that she's had and the impact that she's had, of course, on, on the uh, impact radius. Uh, for those of you with us for the first time, the impact radius was three miles. We stretched it out to six. Well, when you look at the map, <clears throat> it's a three mile radius, but it includes half of Virginia. So what we have to do is do six miles in order to get a true three miles here in uh, uh, in Maryland. So it stretches now uh, much further out to Clinton and places like that. We voted on that and, and approved that on last month. So uh, if you look at the map, you'll see a, a, com a completely different map than what you've been used to seeing. So with that, Ryan, we're going to need to share the uh, <clears throat> share your uh, screen with Ms. Lewis. Uh, and uh, I'll just, Ms. Lewis, I'll just turn it over to you. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. I know you all, your work is, is difficult as well as what we're doing here as nonprofits. So I appreciate you taking the time out to give us some time to share with you what we've been going through as well. Um, the needs are good, are very heavy. Kevin, I'm looking forward to that, to that link, because I, especially in the education area. It is very, very difficult, especially right now, because a lot of our kids are, a lot of them started out four to six months behind before COVID. Now, some of them are looking at a year to a year and a half behind being behind in COVID. And it's something that we cannot ignore as a, as a community. Uh, so I'd like to, if you would, um, 
oblige me, I'd like to share with you um, a little video that was done for us uh, as a nonprofit, just to give you a little feel about who we are and then we'll come back, that's okay. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, great. It, it won't be long. Thank you. Hi, welcome to fame. Tony Lewis, Executive Director of FAME, Foundation for the Advancement of Music and Education. I started FAME in 2004 to provide young musicians the best opportunity to succeed in life by providing music instruction and academic support. Our programs include Music Central, the Summer Music Program, and our signature program, the FAME Jazz Band. Thank you to FAME for being countywide. Um, they have invested in arts programs in the northern area of the county as well as the southern area of the county. They support the teachers by providing artists in residence if they want to have vocal uh, teachers to come in and support um, the singing of their choruses to improve it. So it's the individual student as well as, as the collaborative efforts of a chorus. They have provided workshops for our teachers and our students. Um, they've had artists to come in so that students can have an idea of what it looks like on the career track for those students who are wishing to uh, take their art into a career so that they can actually see what that college and career um, would actually look like outside of the school building. The key part of fame is not only do we work, we work on the total students in the summertime. We're focusing on the music so we can really see the students grow. Uh, our first year was 2011. And one student who was a freshman um, went through our program. And I think we turned a second year and enjoyed a, a singer and enjoyed the University of Maryland so much that she became a music student at the University of Maryland. And then she graduated with a, a music education degree and became a teacher and uh, and then she also uh, her second year of teaching we asked her to do the summer vocal program for fame so blossom is our our director for the fame summer vocal music program fame summer program is an all-round experience and the friends that you meet that will help you on a people skills to pack your way and in a musical sense, but also the professionals that are there to help you through that whole week that you're there, it broadens your horizon on all aspects of the I am currently the same jazz band captain. The same jazz band program is important because they give a lot of opportunities and resources to young musicians to not only grow as a musician with like the music theory and sometimes in private lessons, but also as a student with all the tutoring that they offer, you can really um, improve on your grades and your musical skills. Fame has really impacted my academic growth because I feel a lot more prepared in all of my classes, even though I only took their math uh, tutoring. I now have the study skills and the preparation skills I need to get ahead of all of my classes and to stay focused in all of my classes. I currently serve as the Fame Jazz Ensemble Director um, and also the Coordinator for Technology. I joined the Fame Jazz Band when I was 16 years old because I wanted a place where I can feel at home in my interest with music. Uh, instead of at school where things were maybe geared more towards STEM, I wanted a place that, that, that was geared more towards STEAM, uh, where the arts was accepted uh, and encouraged. The jazz band allowed me to expand um, my musical ability, but they also gave me opportunities to perform and opportunities to get out there, maybe test what I've been practicing. So now me being the director of the Fame Jazz Ensemble was really a, a, a full circle experience. I got to see what it was like being a student and now I get to see what it's like being a teacher. And really the main thing for me, it's just to guide the students to maybe have an experience that was similar to mine or even better than mine. This place allows us to come into a place that we feel like it's our home. Um, this is a place where we can come in and we can let go of everything that we want. 
Um, this is a place that, that we can come uh, and we feel like we belong here. We feel like we're loved here, we're encouraged, and it's okay to be ourselves. I tell them all the time that this, this organization is only as good as its weakest player. And I, I sort of instilled this in them because I wanted them to come to the table having done all their work, their homework, all their practice. So when they come there, that the organization, the jazz band, is going to sound the way that it should sound. I just was so excited about getting on board and trying to help uh, get that started. And then once we found the kids and we got going, of course, it just felt great for me to feel like I was at all uh, being any kind of positive influence. <laughs> and, Helping uh, the, the lives of these uh, young kids, I just uh, I can't I cannot describe uh, what that what that time meant to me. But I think it was about two and a half years that I uh, spent driving down and uh, and leading the band on Mondays and Tuesdays and doing whatever concerts. We just had a ball. This is my thirty first year of teaching high school, and I have a passion for what I do. I've met people over the years that say they really love children. Tony Lewis loves children. Not only does she love children. She backs it up you know, with the loving children. Anything they need. If they need the baritone saxophone, Tony Lewis will find a baritone right. saxophone. She right. loves children. Our program has enhanced young lives through quality music experiences and develop young minds to take charge of their lives. Help us keep the music playing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I want to mention that the music that you heard in the background was recorded by our musicians. These are children from Prince George's County only, and they span from the north to the south part of the county. And they end up being scholars. A lot of them end up being musicians. Some don't. We have some who go who become doctors. Uh, they tell me they play that music when they're studying. Some uh, are engineers, some are teachers, as you will see a little bit later on. So thank you for, for sharing that with me. Um, I am a retired, um, well, first of all, I went to school to be a teacher and I didn't teach. So I, just, I went to the federal government because they offered me a much better package, as you might say, uh, right out of, uh, out of college. But I could never get away from the need and desire to wanting to help kids. So I retired early uh, in 2005, but, but a year before I decided to get fame started so that when I jump out, <laughs> everything would be in place. So fame started in 2004. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen again. Um, okay, let's see. Can you see that? Do you all see Fame logo on the, on the okay. No, not yet. Not yet, Tony. All right, thank you. We got it. Okay, great, thank you, thank you. Um, so we started Fame in 2004 and I was just gonna go out and try to raise money for kids to go to college because I remember how difficult it was for me to get from one year to the next year. So I said, I'm gonna go and help some children out. But as I got into the school system and talking to teachers and to students, I realized a lot of our kids aren't ready to stay in college. They may get there, but they don't necessarily matriculate and stay. So I decided to dig a little bit, dig a little bit deeper. So what I did, it was decided to do fame. You've heard what our mission is to give every young musician the best opportunity to succeed in life. I don't care where, what their career goal is, as long as they just do um, the best that they can do. Our three programs, as you see, is the Fame Jazz Band. We started that in 2015. And the gentleman you saw on the screen standing there with the young men is Nat Adderley Jr. Some of you probably know him. He is the uh, former music director for Luther Vandross. They were best friends until Luther uh, passed. So he came here every every week, stayed two nights for two years, uh, getting this band together, which was uh, just awesome. We uh, had, uh, we're currently at 31 students, cross county by the way, and we have three components. We started just with the jazz band, which were the top level. We decided to add uh, two more. The jazz ensemble is even higher than the, in terms of performance, than the jazz band. And we found some children as we did the aud auditions that were near, they, they just needed a little bit more work. So we decided to start that and help them out as well. Our summer music program, we started in 2011 with the University of Maryland, they're my partner. We provide uh, music technology, uh, vocals and serious um, instrumentals. 
Uh, we serve about 100 Prince George's County students every year. We keep the classes small because technology, you really kind of need to give them that one-on-one -on -one because it's an intense week. And we do about 100 kids. We have kids come from as far as uh, Phoenix uh, to this program. It's probably one of the only uh, summer music programs that focuses and targets middle and high school children. And of course, our music is central, which is where uh, we have been privileged to get the grant uh, from you guys. Thank goodness for that. So we can come to South County. Uh, fame is a harmony of music and education. Uh, I, I, with me, my life has been both. I, I, don't, I can't live without, without the other, one without the other. So we provide music instruction. We give them academic support. As I mentioned earlier, our kids are behind, but there's a lot that needs to be done and we can do it. That's one of the major needs. Um, Dr. Golson is doing a great job, but she needs help not only from the school system, but also from us nonprofits. And we help them with being ready to, uh, for the next career, for their career. The Music is Central project that we have with you guys is at Oxen Hill Middle School. And we're so excited because I've been working with Oxen Hill for a while, but things are quite different now. Um, our focus there is on the, the music students and we're looking at math and music. We're serving 30 eighth grade students right now and 75% of them are first generation youth, eager to learn, um, but the, we're looking at the ability to have the necessary teachers um, and they're dealing with some other things too, uh, which I'll cover in a minute. Uh, we, our grant period is now through August 2022. 20, uh, the strength of being in, having this grant is that we have excellent administrators at Oxen Hill Middle School. They are very serious about these children it's as if they're their own. And the teachers are great as well. As I mentioned, um, one of the teachers uh, is Blossom, who was with us since ninth grade. The challenges are that there are, sorry, they have, some of the children have limited access uh, at the beginning of the school year to uh, because of COVID restrictions. We couldn't go into the schools. As a matter of fact, I've been doing a little sneak in every now and then, but also doing some things online to help the teachers keep it going because it's it's very difficult for them because you know a lot of the teachers have been out because of COVID. So they're doubling up on classes. Um, some of the parents are ill. Some of the parents are doing double duty. So it's kind of difficult sometimes. So, uh, and a lot of them are suffering from Zoom burnout. As you probably heard that there are a lot of uh, social services people in the schools and providing uh, mental support uh, help to, uh, to a lot of the families. And as a matter of fact, there's a waiting list for these students. It's, it's very serious. Uh, so, and as I mentioned, they're behind academically and musically, but we're trying to work on that as well. One of the things that I'm going to be coming to you to let you know, I'm gonna add a summer component to this without any charge to this, because I want to keep the math tutoring going. The eighth graders will be going into the ninth grade. If we let the entire summer go by, they'll lose a lot of the gain that they've had now. So we need to keep that transition going. Otherwise they, won't, they will have a very difficult time um, adjusting to high school, which is why some of the ninth graders um, they drop out. That's one of the largest areas for dropouts. Uh, this is one of the pictures when we were at the at middle school, Austin Hill Middle School. This is uh, Miss Blossom Ojuku um, and a former student. Excellent teacher. So if you ever get over there, ask for her and let her know that, that we're, we're proud of what she's doing. Um, I mentioned we're serving about 30 kids, but for the summer, we're going to try to expand more because we're going to provide those services at Wise High School. Dr. Golson has given me access to space there. We'll be able to use the um, band rooms, the, the vocal rooms. Uh, but she's doing all that she can to support that effort. And I'm very happy because that means that we don't have to put out money for facilities and uh, might as well use it. I mean, the spaces are sitting there. A uh, couple of accomplishments that we've made in 2020 and 2021. I'm sure you heard about the Venture Philanthropy Ready to Work um, grant that was given to initially four nonprofits uh, in 2018. I was one of those first nonprofits. It was an intense three years of, of work. Help. They're trying to get the Prince George's County nonprofits strong because a lot of times we go to grantors and they say, hmm, well, you don't have this, you don't have that. And, they look at us a, a certain way. So we went there with the admission that you will, you will have to have a real serious reason to turn us around or turn, turn us away. And I must say that was one of the best experiences I had. Uh, long, but it was great. <laughs> uh, we were, as a result of that, uh, able to come up with a clearer mission statement 
and we were able to define um, things for programs and structure it a little bit differently. I'm proud to say that we have a new structure for our board of directors. Um, and I want to thank my board chair, my new board chair, for joining me tonight, Ms. Ingrid Valentine. I'd like her to say something in a few minutes, um, who is very, she's uh, very uh, strong about music and about the teaching of our black and brown kids. So I'm very happy to have her leading, leading our uh, organization. We were able to increase our staff, interns and contractors. I must say, I use a lot of contract support. Um, a lot of musicians, a lot of educators, uh, they're great and they can just, they do part-time work and they've been with us for a long time. Uh, we received a state bond this uh, in 2020, yeah, 2021, early part of this year for $175,000 to help us when we get to get our building. So we have a lot more money to, to raise to match that. But we, we're determined to do that. Uh, we've increased our programs. The jazz band used to be 20 students. We're at 31 now. That's a year round program, 44 weeks. Every week they're taking music theory, music technology. They're doing their, uh, their music instruction. So it's a very intense, it's like another school. Uh, how do we make it through fame? <laughs> Only the strong survive is what Jerry Butler says. And that's how we kind of went at it. Um, when the doors closed in 2020, we said, okay, what are we gonna do? We kind of pulled together you know, in one full week and we came together with a, a distance learning program called the FAME um, Online Learning. We deinstalled an existing lab that we had at our FAME buoy uh, location. We, we took the computers, the music technology, the keyboards, everything, and we put them in the children's homes. Because if you remember when COVID first started, the school system didn't start right back up. I mean, they didn't have the, every, the computers and everything at home. We, they would have missed one full month or more of education, but that didn't happen. We were able to start right away. And we were able to put our lab back because UPS and the county council decided, okay, we want you to have that because it's been very successful. They've been over to see it. And we have a recording studio where we have uh, recorded two CDs today. Uh, we, I'll share that with you a little bit later. If I'm going to, you can stop me whenever you're ready. <laughs> we said here at FAME, the music doesn't stop. Here you'll see our students packing up the lab, preparing it to go into the homes. We delivered some of the packages, some of the parents picked them up, but we made sure they had it. And then my students went in and taught them how to use those keyboards, um, how to connect their computers. And then we also had Comcast, if necessary, give them interest net support right away because we did not want to stop to, to stop. We did our tutoring online. I'm trying to kill you with too many uh, video pictures, but you see here we're doing our math tutoring and our students, we were one of the first groups, uh, I'd say probably in the country to do a video, a video clip with the youth uh, using Zoom. Uh, and, and that's online by the way. Some of our major funders and supporters, we have lots of funders and supporters. And when I say that lots of funders, um, these, there are a lot of people who give us um, professional support. We're just very blessed to have them. Prince George's County government has been at the top of the list forever, supporting the children and the United Parcel Service, uh, the U uh, University of Maryland School of Music, the Prince George's County's Public Schools, the Community Foundation of the National Capital Region, of course, in Maryland National Park and Planning, PEPCO has stepped in, uh, and the Venture Philanthropy Partners, and Fair Chance, which is another nonprofit that helps us with capacity building. Prince George's Arts and Humanities Council uh, is also supporting us, and the Clarice Performing Arts Center. We're starting a new uh, MOU with them now, where we'll be doing several events during the year, where they, there will be no charge for use of that facility so that our children can get some experience. This is the second CD that we just released um, in October that I was hoping you'd get a chance to hear and see us perform, but maybe that'll happen this, this year coming. Um, it was awesome. It was produced, recorded, arranged, mixed and mastered by our students. We have students at Howard University in the jazz program and at Berkeley College of Music in music production. And they led those, um, those activities because they were here during COVID. We also are, were featured in the Catalog for Philanthropy, 
last year, this year, and, and for the remainder of this year as one of the best nonprofits in the region. We achieved the Maryland Standards of Excellence. I didn't realize how important it was. A lot of, non, a lot of grantors look for that, so we have it now. Uh, I was also selected as a member of the Leadership Greater Washington Class of 2021. That was a lot of fun and very interesting to do that online <laughs> every week. And we received uh, a, a coveted National Lewis Prize Award uh, and grant um, for uh, $50,000 as well. So we're very excited about that too. The next one to two, three years, we wanna secure and establish a FAME Academy providing the same services that we're doing now, but on a much, much larger scale. And I wanna focus especially on South County because there's, a, you know, there's not much transportation. When we do a lot of our activities at the University of Maryland, it's hard for them to travel from South County up to the University of Maryland and for the parents to drop them off. I mean, you're talking about, it's like a day trip <laughs> each, each way. So we're trying to come to the South County to, to be right there in the mix. We're at WISE, which is much closer. So, so hopefully we'll get a little bit further south pretty soon uh, with this facility. We wanna increase the number of youths we serve. The numbers are staggering. Every time we put out announcements, there are more children than what we could serve based on the funding that we have. And so we wanna increase our funding and becoming more self-sustaining. It's happening uh, slowly but surely. And we wanna ensure that FAME um, continues to have succession planning. Our new board of directors, our chair is Ms. Valentine, Ingrid Valentine, uh, our uh, governance chair, Reg Weaver, Cecilia Day. These are very hardworking people. Greg Wells um, and folks from UPS and PB and um, Pepco, Karen Jackson, Wayne Ferguson. I have to call their names out because they've just been such a blessing. Ma Monika Cunningham, Carl Shakur, and Sam Hutchinson. That is my presentation. I hope I didn't take too long. If you have any questions, I'd love to, to, to answer them. And um, I'd like for my, my chair, if you would, just kind of greet the folks. And if you have any words you want to say, Ms. Valentine? Well, you said it all. I mean, if you guys don't know, she's very passionate about fame. I mean, her presentation is just a small um, indication of her passion. And she is like this seven days a week, 24 seven, no matter what. And I just wanna just jump on and say one or two things about the pivot that we did when um, COVID hit. I currently work for the federal government and like many of my um, federal employees, we all did a pivot that took us about I would say a good month and a half to get the flow going and to make sure, you know, we weren't missing any steps, et cetera. And I work in education, by the way, for the Department of Education. And so um, you would think that we would have been, you know, up and running a little faster. We were still running, but not smoothly, but it took us about a month. In contrast to that, when, when, fame got hit, like everybody else with COVID, I, I think Tony went, within 48 hours and figured out how to keep the process going, keep the schedule going. We went from no Zoom to Zoom and everything else. And so it, 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 it takes a dedicated group and, and a passionate group of individuals to make that happen, to want to make it happen. So I just want to reiterate that, you know, this is probably... I've worked on a lot of nonprofits. This is, or work with a lot of nonprofits, but this is in all of my life, one of my favorites. I grew up, I'm a product of Prince George's County. I went to elementary school, middle school, high school. I'm a product of college at University of Maryland. I even was in the youth orchestra in Prince George's County when they had such a thing. I was second chair of violin. I was really proud of that. But one of the things we didn't have is this program here. Tony has filled in the gaps. We no longer have those youth orchestras, but well, I, I shouldn't say that as far as I know. We don't have them that we had when I was growing up. Tony has filled in the gaps. The most important thing that I think that FAME does is, well, is provide a well-rounded experience to these children. It is, it is such, if you ever get the opportunity to see any of these kids, please take it. You will, be, you will be amazed at what 
happens to these kids once they come into fame and once they graduate and progress on, they still stick on and stick around to fame. And I'm not going to take any more of your time because I know if you have questions you want to ask Tony, but please come out. And, and if you, again, if you get the chance, come out and witness this for yourself. You, you, you just won't believe it, but it's real. Thank you guys for, for allowing us this time tonight. Thank you so much. And I'm going to turn it back over to Tony. I'm glad you said that because we have some of the most talented and brilliant kids in Prince George's County. They just don't have the opportunity to show it in, in the way that they should. Other ways they, they may hit the screen, but we need to get let these people know, let people know that we have some beautiful, talented, smart, and determined kids. We just need to invest in them. So I appreciate what you're investing with this Oxen Hill project. And I look forward to um, doing more with you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for LDC. I appreciate that. Thank you. Are there any thank questions? You, thank you for the presentation. If, if it's possible, can you send us a, uh, a copy of this particular presentation that you uh, have done? We'd like to get that from you. We'd like to get the, uh, the piece that you played earlier. There were a few of us that, that were not on. I want to make sure that we, we get that. But you And I'm, I'm going to open it up for questions. But you mentioned uh, doing things uh, a lot more money to raise. Uh, you also said that there are more children than you can serve. Um, <clears throat> what about the kids in the in the impact area? I want to ask that question. How many kids you have uh, have uh, brought into the program in the impact zone? Okay, and for this particular grant, we're looking at uh, a nucleus of thirty children, and this is for the entire year. Mm -hmm. However, we have been supporting kids at other schools like Oxen Hill Middle School forever. There are other schools where we have children who come in uh, that we serve either for tutoring or as a one-on-one -on -one type of thing um, and the summer programming. And we let these children come in for free. The summer program uh, for other students range from $300 to $500 per week. Prince George's County students come in for free. Okay, so you, you're doing the, you're doing the summer program for free for Prince George's County students. Some of the kids who are in need, and there are a lot in need. For example, a lot of the children, the seventy five percent, the the children at um, Oxen Hill Middle School, they will all I will not charge their parents because they can't afford to they can't afford it. So what I try to do is to go out and get sponsorships, get sponsors who will help us to raise money to bring those kids in. So they're not you know, missing out for the summer. That's the worst, as you know, loss of, uh, of knowledge during the summertime. And they need some, some, some excite, exciting things to do. And usually when they spend a week or two with us, they carry on some of that technology with them because we give them a year of uh, music, music first is a software we give them. They go home and they end up creating beats some children have already created beats for professional folks who, who use some of their beats in their, in their music. And then they find that, oh, that's an income stream. And they're making money while they're in high school. As a matter of fact, Julian Wilson, who is uh, the producer of this latest CD, he did a lot of that before he went. And right now he's having a hard time. Uh, he has a full-time job and a school and school because he's so great. And he's teaching other children, they give back as well. So yes, sir, I would do give, I would say over half of the kids that come to the summer program do come on scholarship because I don't want them to miss that opportunity. So I'll go to Pepco and some of the other groups and ask, you know, I have X number of kids. Is there any way you can give us some funding to do this? Sometimes we can't meet the number because we don't get enough funds because we give them a meal as well. Food is a major issue for the students as well. Okay. I know that uh, Potomac Landing has a, uh a program for kids uh, in music. Uh, you might want to talk with uh, the principal at that school. But okay. I'm, I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, if you can um, <clears throat> give us the screen back, and then I will we'll just open up uh, for uh, for questions for everybody. Any, okay. Anybody, uh, uh, Delegate uh, Turner, we want to acknowledge you. Uh, I know that you were a little late coming on. Good to see you. Um, and uh, so we'll just let's just open it up for questions. Anybody have any questions? Ms. Navis, Vice Chair. Yes, right on. Question, I have a compliment to uh, extend. Ms. Lewis, I've had the experience, and it is an experience, to witness what you do on a number of occasions with your youth. 
I love the way you bring them out and they're always so professional and the way that they, that they present themselves. You can see the love of the art with these students. So I just really wanted to compliment you that you were able to do that. And most importantly, that you've made this a wraparound service, that it's more than music. Yes. You've shown them ways that they can make a living. You've um, just, it's very exciting. It is an experience. And, and so I encourage anyone who has not experienced fame to come out the next time that you are performing and it's safe for us to be out um, and have that experience because it is, it's, it's a wonderful experience. And I applaud you for what you do. Thank you so much. Uh, that means so much <laughs> to, to me and to my team because we do put our heart and soul in it because we don't, we, only, we don't get another chance. Every year I say, I don't get another chance with this child. So I have to do the best I can this year because next year they may be off to college, off to someplace else. So we just have to do And that. many of them do go off to college. Right, today, yeah. uh, I'd say 90, 95% of our kids have gone to college. The ones who did not, who have not attended college, they've gone on to careers in music because they received the training while they were here. You're right, thank you. Thank you for that point. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, I think I've seen your name on my, on my list here. Thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> my donations. Thank yes. you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Dr. Lattimore. Hi, um, I think your presentation was excellent. I really enjoyed it. Um, I remember your application when it came through. So thank you for everything that you're doing for the youth um, in Prince George's County. Um, I found it um, amazing last year that they even had a program like that. So with that mm -hmm. said, what is the um, impression or what do the youth walk away with um, in this area within the six mile radius? Do you have a waiting list? Do you find that you don't get many applications? Um, where do most of your applications come from? And are the youth in this area that is impacted, do they get preference? Um, I give, I must tell you, I, I don't turn too many away if we can afford it. <laughs> but uh, the youth in this area, South County has been one of my main areas. And if you notice when I recruit for jazz band students, I say I try to focus on military and students in South County to get them in. But one of the problems is the parents getting them to Wise High School area. So I need to find a facility that's a little bit closer where the parents can get home from work really quick and bring them in the evening to the to the services. Um, so you guys, could you school. use the technology center on Bach Road? Is that- I an love that technology center. All? That could be an option. Yes, it could. I saw it a couple of years ago. I just had not been back there recently. Okay, yeah, I would offer that you um, talk to them. It's run by Parks and Planning. And um, I know that they have space in there, but I don't know about renting it out and things like that. I know that's where we go to vote, but it's a huge complex. And I yes. know that they do have a lot of meeting rooms. So that would be an option for um, South County. That would be great. And what we'd have to do is uh, find some grant where it would take us for the year so we can support the staff as well as the materials. Sometimes uh, folks wanna know, why do I feed my children? Well, let me tell you, there's yeah. some kids, when we do feed them, you find that they go around to the tables and I've heard them, they'll say, um, they'll try to put sandwiches away because they don't, they said, this is my last meal. Mm -hmm. I, won't, I don't know what I'm gonna have for the next morning. Some of those kids, and you would not recognize, you don't know who they are. But I must tell you, I was one of those children um, who, I come from the deep south. <laughs> my, my, my dad was a sharecropper. And one of the last things you don't want to, you want people to know is that you're poor. Because when, no, you're, child, when you're a child, yes. And so I realized that a lot of the, um, uh, the children are hungry. So we do try to give them food as well. Because if you can't, you can't play music or, or pay attention to that, that um, the, the yeah, math, can't math problem, you cannot focus, as you know, without it. Right. So. so I would I would offer that you would, you know, that you call them at the technology center and yeah. just see how much they would charge if they charge anything, since you're a Prince George's County resident and include that in um, your budget if you plan on some resubmitting a packet. OK, but thank I enjoyed you. the presentation and thank you. 
Thank you, doctor. I appreciate that. Appreciate your comments. Well, I do hope you plan on resubmitting. Um, but, Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> do we have any other, other questions? Good, good. Uh, Kevin. I appreciate that. So yes, uh, as everyone else say, a wonderful presentation. Thank you for taking the time to um, come to us and present um, this information. It was um, helpful, knowledgeable. Um, the two piggyback on Dr. Lattimore uh, comment. So we do also also have another um, center here in Brandywine. So you know, it's a brand new one that was built in Brandywine as well that you can um, check out. Because that leads me to my question: When uh, we talk about South County, uh, Prince George South portion of Prince George County a lot. Um, a lot of these programs don't reach the area down here. Um, and so I noticed that you, when you kept talking about location, location, uh, were you th talking about a temporary location or you're thinking about something, a permanent location that you can actually call your own um, in South County? So I'm just wondering, because I know you talked about getting a bond from the state as well. Mm -hmm. So you're just trying to figure out where you're looking to build um, or find a location that's permanent to fame. Well, we, we've talked as a, with the board, we're looking, for, if we found a space temporarily, because we can't wait, like I said, we can't, if we wait a year, we've missed so many children. So if there's um, space and financial support to go with it, that's what we need. Sometimes you, do, you get a grant and it's only for a short period, a short amount. I don't like to get the kids and then have to drop them so quickly. So I, I, we're open to, and my chair can speak, we're open to temporary and permanent. Um, you, you know, Quid, uh, Kevin, on, on the back end of that, maybe we can talk to Mr. Lewis, who uh, is the representative from MGM, and possibly right. find some space down there uh, that they would be willing to uh, um, allow fame to use. I will reach out to him um, and talk to Ms. Lewis and uh, Ms. Valentine, kind of. Um, you know, off the record, uh, I, don't, I don't know, we, we, we could possibly reach out to them and see if they could uh, provide some space for saying that at MGM. So, I'm, I'm available, Pastor, so let's go. Okay. I, you know, I love that idea because a lot of times if we find places for our children, we want the environment to be great as well, because yeah. when they can see and feel themselves in the environment, they just they just shoot, shoot up. So that would be great. Hmm. Yeah, you are. Uh, kind of test me just a second ago to speak on children that uh, don't have food to eat. You know, this is, uh, this is major. They're, I mean, when you look at the inflation rate, you look at people on fixed incomes, you look at seniors, uh, the safety net is, you know, got a bunch of holes in it. Yeah. And uh, it's important that we think about those things while we Setting out nice warm homes there, people who live on the streets and a lot of other places. And I don't want to get emotional about this, but this is sensitive to me. And uh, so I appreciate you bringing that out. And I'll talk to Mr. Lewis and see whatever we can do to help you succeed with this. Anybody else? Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Kevin, if you and uh, Ms. Navy's lower your hands. I keep looking at you thinking that you have another question. <laughs> Thank you. Any, anyone else? Uh, I, I saw Ms. Brown make a comment in the uh, in the chat. She appreciated the, uh, uh, the presentation. Oh, this uh, is Kimberly, wonderful. Kimberly did the same thing. Uh, Ms. Brown, you, Kimberly, have anything you'd like to say? I'm sure I am just blown away. Um, every time I see your presentation and see what you guys are doing, um, it just fills my heart. My, um, I have a particular uh, affinity for the arts and music. I have a daughter who's at Duke Ellington and our house is filled with it. So to be able to bring that to our kids in such a meaningful and um, impactful way is just fantastic. Uh, one thing I did want to just put on your radar when you were mentioning um, that you were feeding the children. Yes. Um, keep an, an ear out. I know you're on our mailing list, but um, on the county executive's office, but keep an eye out. Um, there will be some grants um, coming out at some point um, in the spring for food, um, nonprofits that are providing food services. Yes. And that'll be being announced. But I think um, 
I don't have all the details to how you're providing the food, but keep an ear out and see if you qualify for some of those funds so that you're able to um, get some funding specifically for the food to feed the children. I think that you'll fall into that qualification, but um, I just wanted to share that with you when you mentioned it, because it wasn't something that I had thought about. Because when I think of your organization, I'm really thinking about arts and, you know, music and dancing and that sort of thing. But um, again, just trying to think of ways that you could get additional funding to support the fabulous program that you're, you guys are providing. I appreciate that. The suggestions are great. And the mm -hmm. county executive has been very good with her COVID-19 grants. Although yeah, that came from my office. Thank you it very did. much. Yes. <laughs> Even us afloat, I must tell you. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. Okay, good. good. There'll be more grants coming from our office and they'll be on our um, strategic partnership website. Yeah, Wonderful. Kevin, that might be something yeah. we want to put on our needs assessment list. Um, uh, I think uh, Ms. Valentine had, had her hand raised. I, 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 that was just a clap for, for Mrs. Brown's oh. comment. But I, I do want to just emphasize the food issue is, you know, not something we really talk about a lot in fame. Um, and of course, it's becoming, it was another one of those things that when COVID hit, we pivot on, right? Because people lost their jobs, people couldn't go to work. So families are doing without, doing with less. So, you know, here is fame, again, a complete picture, trying to, you know, incorporate and fulfill that child's life. We got to feed them. We got to give them, you know, and, and so as Tony said, and you guys all know, you can't, you can't focus. And, and music is a concentrated subject, right? You've got to focus. You've got to devote. And you, the last thing you can do is focus when your stomach is growling. But you know, I, I just want to say, again, I appreciate all the, the um, wonderful suggestions. Tony and I have been taking yes. notes, and we're going to run back and, you know, and fill, see how many gaps we can fill in. But, um, you know, these kids... We, we do this for this, for the love of it, just like you guys do, right? And so these are our, these are our priorities in our lives. These are the things that make us get up in the morning. And I just, you know, again, without getting all emotional because past, <laughs> but um, I just want to say thank you again. Just thank you. Okay, uh, Kimberly. Yeah, I, I would echo what everyone else has said, just from the perspective of such a well done comprehensive presentation. Um, you know, when we look at the impact area, Pastor Robinson spoke about the needs assessment. You know, we're always looking at, um, you know, what is it that we need in, in the southern part of the county? And you referenced that a lot, um, Tony, just from the perspective of this area specifics um, as you compare it to North County or, or, or other places that you see and just the importance of the work that you're doing is just so spot on. Um, happy that you all are taking copious notes on what you're hearing just in terms of additional opportunities um, for grants and things like that. Um, and kudos to you for putting together um, a really solid proposal that outlined the project, the scope, the risk factors, et cetera, um, and articulating it here for us. So, so thank you for that. So no questions, really just a kudos to you for the work that you have done and continue to do. Thank you, Ms. Hall. And, you. And you, might, you might know that Ms. Hall is the chair of the selection committee. <laughs> so <Yeah>. noted. <laughs> but throw, that, throw that out there. I took a note. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> uh, uh, you, you you have anything you'd like to add? You uh, carry on. Uh, yeah, uh, no, and I think that, um, again, want to echo what everybody has said. Just I think that um, in the review process that we did, I guess that was last year, yeah. and looking at your application, I, I think that what you presented here today sort of really brings to life and shows the comprehensiveness of your program in a way that the application doesn't. And I know that you have space limits and that kind of thing. I would yes. just sort of suggest that as you, as you think about and make decisions about applying again, making sure that what you showed us in that video and what you showed us in that PowerPoint is really clear in your application, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then, you know, I think that to echo what Dr. Lattimore said and Mr. Harris of really understanding 
um, how many young people in the impact zone you can serve, but also making sure that they can be served in their backyard without having to, oh, now we have to bust them somewhere else, or, oh, now we have to think about those things. Yes. I yes. think are going to be really important things that um, if you do apply, yes. um, and not just you, but we'll be looking for in all of the applications no that, that we yes. see. Yes. And uh, Takesha's on the selection Thank committee you. also. Thank you. Uh, I'm just throwing it, throwing it out there, right? Dr. Lathmore is on the selection committee. So just wanted out uh, uh, Ms. Navies is on the selection committee also. Uh, um, uh, uh, Delegate Turner. Uh, yes. I'm sorry for my lateness. I have to apologize, but I, I couldn't get on the call. I was trying. Believe me, I was trying. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Um, the little the presentation that I did see it was wonderful. It was beautiful. I just cannot believe that you are doing so much work for these young kids. It's it's so wonderful, and uh, you have to remember also. I mean, you you you're talking to the LDC, <laughs> the LDC. <laughs> yes, let me say we do wonderful things here. We we. So yes, definitely, I was going to ask, but uh, uh, Ms. Walker asked, you know, the question about, I hope that you reapplying, uh, they, since they have opened it up already again, right, uh, Reverend? Yes, yes. ma'am. Yeah, application. Applications and everything, and, uh, and, and, and he keeps hitting them. I want you to, uh, to listen out for that hitting that the reverend is telling you now okay because yes, it's important it's important and and i'm talking in behalf of our, our senator ob patterson and myself well we're in session right now and this is why uh the uh senator is not here he was still uh in session last night after after nine yeah. o'clock i was there to after seven o'clock this is the time that is really pushing for a session going on. So if anything that we can do, Reverend, you know, while we're in session or, or, or if we have to wait to act the session, please let the Senator and I know uh, what's going on because um, this is our busiest time right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you know, uh, election year is right around the corner. Um, but we're willing to help in any kind of way that we we can as well. So you got a, you, you got some elected officials that be on your side as well. Well, Delegate Turner, you and uh, Senator Patterson have been wonderful supporting Fame, and I appreciate that. Without all of you guys, you know, none of this would happen. So it's not just me; it's all of us collectively. And just imagine what the future could be. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, Ms. Mack. I don't have any questions. I just want to thank you uh, for the presentation. As everyone stated, it was a beautiful presentation. Um, I am not on the selecting committee, so I was not aware of all the things <laughs> you do. And uh, you know, I'm extremely impressed. Um, I am grateful that you know the children within and students within our county are getting that education, the exposure, um, and and just thank you for what you all are doing your entire team. Thank you, Ms. Jefferson. Sure. Um, hi, I, I uh, am also not on the selection committee, but um, I was very impressed by uh, your presentation. I'm also a product of Prince George's County uh, Public Schools. So just knowing that we have something in that that is supporting our youth, um, I'm really encouraged by that. So um, thank you and um, keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Ms. Matt. Thank you. Listen, you guys got me messed up about these kids uh, having to eat. I'm telling you, this is, uh, I'm still all messed up over here. I won't tell you about the homelessness then. Oh, stop, oh. please, please. You know, I, I cry a lot anyway, but, but this, is, uh, this is bothering me. I need to talk to you guys. I need to just get a feel for what's going on and, uh, and we'll move from there. Um, uh, Kanika, um, Dina, you guys have anything that you'd like to say? Oh, no, thank you. But um, no. excellent presentation. Thank Kanika, you. is the one that handles all the money and writes the checks. 
<laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much. It was a very great presentation. Thank you, Deanna. All right, uh, I think that's everybody. Um, did we miss anybody? Ryan, uh, Ryan is in the background. Ryan is a legal, legal dude. Uh, he has, um, he kind of runs things along with him and Nicole. Nicole, uh, this is her first year with us. Uh, we lost um, our administrator last year. Nicole has stepped in and we are excited about what she's doing. She's getting herself up to speed and we deeply appreciate her and, and Ryan and, and what they do. Brian is a brand new father. So we've been trying not to uh, press him too hard uh, and just kind of letting him do his thing and, uh, and be a daddy. So we, we just thank you guys <laughs> That's for what you're doing. And uh, just appreciate this entire council and the work that's being done. And, and uh, uh, Ms. Lewis, we thank you for this presentation tonight. You and uh, Ms. Valentine have blessed us and opened our eyes to see a lot more than just what you do. So uh, we'll be probably discussing this after. We'd like to get that presentation from you. If you will send that to- uh, I'll send it to Ms. Nicole. Nicole. Yes. Okay. I'll do that. Nicole and, and she's doing a great job, by the way. She's been very good with her interactions and, and yes. communications. So thank you, Nicole. Yes, ma'am. So we, uh, you know, we normally uh, ask for a vote to adjourn, and and you know, Delegate Turner and and, and Senator Patterson, they are quick to raise their hands. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, I normally exclude them when we call for a vote to adjourn. Um, but, uh, and of course, they're down in Annapolis, but they are quick to raise their hands. I can remember I served on the, uh, um, the police reform task force, and I, I've not been used to it. I, you know, I thought after you close out, you'll hang around and discuss and socialize a little bit. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh, this is something I'm, I'm getting used to. Everybody cuts you off. I ended up being the only one. I looked down and looked back up, and I was the only one on the screen. Everybody was gone. <laughs> so everybody was gone. So I, I, uh, I am going to exclude Delegate Turner with respect to asking for a, a motion to adjourn. And a second, so she 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 just she can't say anything from this point. So do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, I, I move that we adjourn. Do <laughs> so I have a second? <laughs> Can we second? <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Everybody have a great week. Thank you, uh, thank you everybody. Thank, thank you so much. Presentation. Good night. Thank you. Thank you so Good night. All right. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.